Welcome back everyone, I'm Graven and this is East 9. Like I said last time, I grinded a bit of Nox, so we opened up the Vortex and it's blue. It is definitely blue, so that's what one marker means. No need to rush. No, definitely not. And it's way over here with an area we still have open and a landmark point as well. I don't think this is gonna be the full 80% that we still have left. But we'll see, there might still be an area opening up because here you got a nice big old space where they can put a bit of the map and maybe a little bit in between. But we'll see, we are getting further and further. And the side quests are this one, his father's son, and the Wraith Restoration. We had another piece as well, but yeah, that's here. The final disposition, this is a bit of the story part, so let's go to uh, the antiques and do our first side quest. And between the side quest, we're gonna do the blue vortex in the open area, so we can explore that part as well. Oh, hello there, you must be here because you received my request. Oh, how delightful, thank you all very much. You said the wraith for the cenotaph at the cemetery were damaged, right? I understand that you're planning on providing replacements for them. Oh, allow me to explain. In order on the Victory Day festival, wreaths are hung on the cenotaph in the cemetery. When the festival concludes, the wraiths are stored by the trading bureau. This year, too many things were stacked on the wooden box the wraiths were kept in. The box was crushed and the wreaths inside were damaged. Oh no, poor Reeds. Oh, chalk it up to piss poor warehouse management. <laughs> it, it is, it, it truly is. Uh, I accept full responsibility for this mishap. The tradition uh, started to remember Saint Rosvita's heroic feats during the war. It's been around ever since the church declared her as a saint. And that's why it's so crucial that it isn't cancelled this year. This shop is acclaimed for its repair, so I came here seeking help. Ooh, in our line of business, we fix many an old relic like ourselves, for instance. I am humbled that you'd entrust our little shop with such an important undertaking. They're broken, but they're not beyond repair. Their foundations are still intact, thankfully. But it will take some time, more than we have to fetch the materials. And <laughs> that's why they asked us to help, okay. And we'll need fresh flowers for the reeds. They aren't easy to come by. I see, I understand your situation. If this is to honor Rosvita, then this is my responsibility as well. Perhaps we could assume the task of procuring the materials at all. Yeah, <laughs> let's get the materials. Yeah. Oh my, such wonderful boys and girls. That would help us immensely. Thank you all very much. There are two materials that we need to complete the memorial reeds. The first of them are white ribbons to decorate the reeds with. The tailor in the main square should carry them. The main square. Sounds easy enough. And the other is memorial flowers. They can be found growing all over Balduk. However, it's tradition to decorate the reeds with the most beautiful snowy white flowers at this time of year. Such flowers bloom on Seal Canyon Trail. Ah, I've heard about this. In a canyon where the sun shines, blooms pure white flowers that glimmer like snow. It's a very rare uh, trait, even uh, for this species. Yes, we've been to Seal Canyon trails before, so it won't be too hard to look. Alright, field trip. I always wanted to go flower picking. Oh, I apologize for asking this of you all. Uh, we'll get the wreath ready to attach the decorations. The canyon is a treacherous place. So do look out for each other there. Uh, there would definitely be no problem. So where are we gonna go first? A question mark. Have you never w looked at this shop? Oh, welcome. <gasps> We've never looked at the shop. Oh, that that's not good, is it? Uh, resist all and strength defense lifting. That's actually really good. It means uh, resistance against status changes. But I especially like this one. A knife so fine that objects cut with adhere back together. 
Ooh, that is really sharp. Ah, a connoisseur, I see. Mm-hmm. And we definitely want it. I have plenty of other wares for you. Thank you for stopping by. No problem. Should have done it a lot sooner. Never even thought about it, to be honest. Uh, so, this is where the shop is from the main square. But... I'd rather go to... Seal Canyon first. I wonder if it's an actual uh, material we can get. Or if it's just a special mission one. It's probably a mission type one. Or else the place where we are right now would be the perfect place to find it. Because that's what uh, most of these uh, discovery points are. It's just a place where there are a lot of materials bound together again. So you can collect a whole bunch straight at once. Alright, let's look on the map where we need to be. Mm, I can walk, but I could also just go to the outside of it. But if I do that, there's a good chance I will trigger the side quest that I want to do last. It's, it's the one that enhances the main story, as far as we learned. Because I did say we would learn more about the history again. You know what? We're just gonna rush it. Because our level is uh, fairly decent, so it doesn't add anything to uh, grind a little bit more while we are doing this episode. Okay, m maybe one or two. Okay, there's the step. And uh, there is no challenge in uh, fighting a lot of these, because it's not like they are so powerful that we get a very quick level up of them. Would be ironic if right now we get a level up, if we're <laughs> beating one of these. Uh, let's see, are we getting closer? Yes, we are. I can't. Oh, is it because of the monsters that I can't interact with them? Uh, probably. Wow, get a look at those. <laughs> Sunlit Canyon, pure white bloom, snowy shimmer. It checks all the boxes. No doubt about it. These are the flowers used in the memorial reeds. How curious. Here they bloom especially brilliantly compared to the others of their kind. This spot likely meets its optimal growing conditions in terms of climate and terrain. Awfully convenient of them to loom just in time for the festival, though. Let's try not to take any more than we need, okay? Definitely. We need to have a guarantee that if we ever need them again, there will be more left. Uh, all that remains is to acquire the white ribbons as requested. Let us head to the tailoring shop situated in the main square. Uh, we should... But I see two more yellow gathering points. Let's add that for just a little bit of extra spar. Potentially, we only got one from uh, three. All right, let's get back to town. And yes, I still don't know <laughs> what this is. I've uh, tried a different couple of things, but I couldn't get it to trigger. It's almost like a certain person needs to be in the area for us to interact so with. Yeah, me too. Uh, welcome, welcome. Looking for something extra festive to wear today? 
You tell Giselle you need some white ribbon for the memorial wreath. Oof, the wreath broke? That's rough. I happen to have some overstock, so no need to pay for it. Wait a sec, okay? Thank you so much. You're a lifesaver, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> Don't mention it. Honoring those lost in the Hundred Year War is an important tradition. Clea's foundations were built on their deeds after all. It's the least we can do. Kinda spooky that they broke on Victory Day though. Let's hope it isn't a bad omen. Huh, if only this chick knew about the ultimate Grimwald Nox coming up. Not to mention Zola's ruining, uh, running about. There's definitely a feeling of dread in the air. Well, we better fix up those wreaths if we want to start uh, driving it all away. Indeed. Mm, everything okay? Those looks on you guys could fray a Finnish seam. Oh no, we're just talking om amongst ourselves. Thanks for the help. With that, we have now gathered all the necessary materials for the memorial wreaths. Let's return to the antique shop and have Rodirio and Melissa put them together. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised if you also need uh, to apply them at the graves. Or the memorials, depending how you look at it. Ah, you brought the ribbons and flowers for the reeds. These are just the flowers we need. You have our thanks. With these, we can now fix the reeds. I'm just happy we could help. Now then, we have work to do. It'll be just a moment. You might stay as well, Dale. Oh, thanks. You're all lifesavers. Rodirio and Melissa got to work right away. Once the reeds were completed, they went to the cemetery together. Wow, those reeds really ended up coming together. Not that I expected any less from you, Mr. and Mrs. Rindall. No, oh no, we hardly did a thing. Though, I think I speak for all when I say these reeds outshine the previous ones. And we have the beautiful flowers and ribbons you all collected to thank for that. And now, the souls of the saints and those lost in the war can rest in peace another year. <laughs> I'm just glad we can help. Meh. Actually knowing Aprilis gives all of this a bit of a funny feeling. <laughs> Yeah, because they're basically putting the reeds for her. Well, the original her and the original 100 year heroes. Indeed, at the same time, a certain sense of accomplishment as well. You can say that again. Thanks for your help, Mr. and Mrs. Rindall, and uh, to all of you as well. We'll make sure to take extra care of these. We don't want to put all the, your work to waste. Ah, thank you for going through the trouble of collecting everything for us. We'll just be going back into the shop now. Ah, yes, we do have our little side projects to be completing. Now then, I hope you all enjoyed the Victory Day festivities. Mm, same to you. Side project, huh? Ah, that piques my interest. <laughs> Upon the liberation, they did mention having a few materials for the reach left over. Well, it couldn't hurt to go in for a sneak peek, right? All right, that went great. I say all right. It is part of uh, the quest, isn't it? Are they doing something for Anamona? This one. Oh, Rodario, that one simply won't do. I think girls these days prefer frills like this one has. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, Melissa. You don't like any of the ones I pick. Maybe this would be easier if you just picked it yourself. I do have my opinions, but I could never decide all on my own. Oh my, what a pleasant surprise, if it isn't Krisha and her friends. Wait just a moment, dears, I'll go prepare a pot of tea. Oh, you don't have to do that. 
We're just in the area, so we thought we'd say hello. Oh? You'll have to excuse us, dear. We're a tad preoccupied. To be precise, I wanted to make Anemona new clothes over the leftover ribbons and flowers. We wanted her to have a pretty new set in time for the festival. And I uh, might have been finished in time for the festival if it weren't for your nettling. Well, I only wanted Anemona to have the most adorable clothes in town. <laughs> ah, you must be inspired after repairing the reeds. Oh, look, <laughs> looks like it. We should probably leave them be. Oh, I'm sorry, Krisha. Please, come back anytime. Ah, uh, all for Anemona. If they only knew. <laughs> Is everything okay, Anemona? Uh, yes. I was just thinking about Melissa and Rodario's conversation. It reminded me of something. Of something from your past? Yes. A memory from many years ago. Of a time I spent with Rosfida. With Aprilis. What do you think, Anamona? Oh, that's cute. Actual memories of her. What do I think? You wish to know if that dress is defective? No, silly. It's a new outfit for you to wear. It took me a long time to make these. It's a present from me to you. A present? Then shall I give you something in return? You don't need to give me anything. I just want us to be friends, Anamona. Papa has already instructed me to do so. That's not what I mean. Why? How can you do that? Your doll was getting old. I merely attempted to give her a new body. However, I did not expect her soul to reject it and disappear. But you didn't have to throw her away! Hmm? What is the reason for this outburst? You don't know anything! I've had Anamona since I was little! She was my only friend! I thought you were gone forever, and here you are. I want so badly to take you with me, but you have your own life now, and I can't risk losing you again. Yeah, that's, that's the only question then. Did she keep her soul over all those years, or did Aprilis give it back to her? It's what brought her soul back, isn't it? She didn't take you because she was worried about you. It sounds like Aprilis was actually a pretty normal girl. I'm kind of relieved to hear that. Anamona, you're smiling. Hmm? Oh. So it seems dolls can smile too. Anamona. So what you were looking for was Aprilis all along? Perhaps, but only in the beginning. Now I wish to find a way to end the Grimwald Knox forever. Aprilis has been fighting alone for so long. But now, I can do something to help her. I do not want for her to feel alone again. Oh, well, we'll definitely help you. Yeah. Thank you, Hadol. Because no one must feel alone again, ever. So... What do you all think about this Zola guy? From what I know about him, he sounds unpredictable. And his magnum opus is anybody's guess. Yeah, I just hope that we'll find out soon. Well, I have a guess about that, but it's totally random. So un until we find out a little bit more before I bother you guys with it, we're going to wait a little bit longer. But considering it's alchemy and the fact that he needed Adol to finish his Magnus Opus, I think there's something to connect everything together again. So yeah, I think it lays in there. But more than that, I'm not going to theorize just yet. 
Yeah, that's a great scene. We really like that one. Alright. So, I think now might be a wise choice to do the blue Vortex, the Grimwald Eos. So we can open up that section as well. And have a little bit of to explore before we end the episode. And next time we're gonna hopefully be able to do the two other side quests we have. But yeah, let's get to it. Residual enmity lingers in the air. You not just leave it here. Uh, 69, six waves and a never ending threat. Well, we are 70, 71, so we, and we have ranked everything up as much as we can, so let's go for it. And like this part, this Nox thing is the reason why I want every character to have the maximum equipment they can have. Because then they can be the most effective against the enemies. Because they all fight in this. Keep an eye out for secret attacks from the back. Like that. Yeah, but by now I, I'm just using a lot of the map more than actually what I'm seeing on the screen. Because it's much more easier to see if there is a sneak attack from certain enemies that goes towards my screen. Yeah, that was a good one. More than acceptable. Oh, if they do it so far away... I feel that this is the perfect time for them to do a sneak attack, isn't it? Told you! Recognize the enemy, but it doesn't matter, they all will go down. Oh, the fact that I landed straight on the swing that really, really, really hurts. I think we did okay. Basically, our strongest character was uh, hitting them with everything we got. There's not much you can do beside that. Oh, that kind of enemies. Not what I wanted, but let's use it. <laughs> Not super excellent, but acceptable. All right, third wave. I know there are a few helping hands that will restore the screen a bit. I'm hoping that those will pop up as well. No charging the swing. Yeah, 
And this is the first one that we have done where I actually have a feeling that it's gonna be really hard to get a S rank off, cause they are really sending in the strongest ones. Well, barely. Oh, well, halfway there. Did you load? So there's not gonna be uh, too many surprise attacks anymore. And then we should be able to handle it. Petrified, perfect. I like that one. All right, wave four. One full wave, one boss, and we should be there. Okay, I think if I do it now, we should have it back by the time the boss gets here. I'll give you all the I hate insects because they really, really use that shield way too early. <laughs> what before I can be able to defeat them. And also the, the ambushes, they also seem to be like the longer waves here. And really? You're gonna throw a boss in the wave? Definitely not as strong as when we fought it as a boss. Look at his HP, it's not even dropping. Holy crap. Burn it, burn it all to hell. When they help me with no usage, we'll definitely gonna have to use it. All right, quick, 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 quick. Okay, food, 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 food. Got my strength back. Yeah. 
Kill it. Yeah, that was really tough. We made it. And only the second round was a little bit messy. I think the rest we did pretty well. I want to see what the results are. Yes! Aha! Night Frost Beauty. Soul Spar, Nocturne Oil. Tempest Elixirs. Yeah, I really need to think about that as well. See guys, we are reaching the end of the game and I have like 50 of those Tempest Elixirs saved up. Which means I got 50 extra levels that I can give to all the characters. We need to pick a point to use them because it would be a waste not to. I waited to as long as possible so we get the most profit out of it because if you're in the beginning of the game, it just it's just a win of a little bit of experience, but we don't want to do it after the final boss because then you have no use for it. So I think after the side quest we might start using it, but I'm still thinking about it. Uh, you can now convert the Nox Gauge into Twilight Shards at the Lantern of Crossing. Okay, so basically they're saying there is no more Nox except the ultimate one. And we can grind it ourselves for materials. Alright. I can get behind that. Because it's actually not that hard to grind some Nox. Ooh, really nice all those blades. So this would be a place where we find very high-end materials. It's a swamp. It'll suck you in if you step in it. Let's stay clear if we can help. Yeah, we all definitely try to avoid that. Because we did it once before and we don't have mod shoes so as in uh, Lacrimoise of Dana. So we can't walk over them freely. There's the chest. So I'm guessing if we just use the pedestals to get higher, we should be able to get there, right? It does look like we need to go all the way around, so let's do that. Oh, what the hell? Can that thing go on the land? Yeah, that thing is strong. He must be carrying one of the higher materials. That can be the only reason why he's having such a massive HP pool. Just a relic bone. That's it. And probably a bunch of experience, but if that's the only material, then I don't see a point in spending that much time trying to defeat it. Mm, it's still higher, all the way on top of there. Damn, this area is actually pretty huge, isn't it? Careful, don't want to get stuck in the mud. <laughs> Alright, so we have a little shortcut to get this high at least. But why is it there? Does it lead to anywhere? No, we're definitely not gonna get there. Hello! 
Oh, it's so sticky, so sticky. It's so hard to defend in this. Thousand money. Yeah, we're just having a quick rundown of the entire area. And I will go into detail in between the episodes. I just want to have a good look around. Then we see most of it, if not all. And then we can fill in the blanks in between the episodes. Which I can already see that it's there. So how... Ooh, I think I see it. And this... There it is, all the way on the top. And that's the easy way to get there. <laughs> Hell yeah. We're gonna go for the chest. A treasure chest. Life elixir. Is it? There it is. There's a really nice diverse amount of enemies on here. That means a lot of different materials you can gather from it. And besides the mud monsters, the rest is doable. HP wise. when we are using the Tempest, do we want to evenly level everybody up or make one person extremely high? I think if I had to choose, I would probably go with leveling one person up and the rest a little bit. Like make Edel like, for instance, level 80 and the rest 75. Because Edel is the person, he's always in our team, no matter how we make it because I want him in the team because I like the way he moves no matter how that <laughs> sounds uh, I think we need to get there from the other side damn this place is huge this is gonna be a big chunk of percentage of them on the map is it yeah it's probably the big mud monster on the floor Unless they have big primordials hiding around here as well. Which would, would be very unexpected. But I would not say no against it. But they were also really cool to fight. to find a place higher and glide that might be the case I do like the fact that we are making little shortcuts for every layer we <laughs> go up and look at that even all the way over there to go back here again oh and, it, and it's a red chest up there so you know what that means that means it's very desirable I, I think that's the easiest way to describe it it does mean it's a good item could be a skill, uh, could be another sacramental uh, slot. New location discovered. Watchtower of the Hundred Year War. An it's impressive right landmark. Well, it is really nice. Would have liked to see it in its uh, heyday. Nicely uh, finished up. No broken blocks everywhere. Just a few materials. Ooh, yeah, 
this. Let's uh, do this side first. Because now that we have the landmark, we can also teleport up there, which does feel like the highest spot in the entire realm. Oh, there's stuff down there as well. Like I said, a lot of biodiversity in here. Like, this excursion is mainly just to uh, have a look around how everything seems to be, but it's not bad, is it? I, l I really do like the fact that the amount of enemies, the different heights, different materials, they all come together. De de definitely a good place lost to explore. And besides, we fought hard for it. We deserve to be here. Because that uh, blue vortex was not uh, easy. Can we still get out of here, or did we fall into a trap? Now there is the exit. Right, I want to go to this chest first, and we probably need to fall down in order to get it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ways to go down, isn't it? Let's focus on the chest at least. Because we have two chests there. Like I said, we can use the teleport to get back up again. Which you definitely need to use because there are too many layers here. Making it way too easy to lose your way. Seal. It's a nice item, but I will not be using it. <laughs> uh, yes, that's one. Already at ninety-seven percent explored. It's just the little tidbits that needs to be opened up. All right, let's get down and see if we can find our way over there. Like I said, that's the best way I want to do new areas, just together find like 95% and most of the treasures and I will fill up the blanks. <laughs> like I said, I really doubt this is gonna end up bringing everything to 100. It's gonna get it relatively close. Ooh, I see two chests. And did my eye also catch oh, another chest on the other side? It did, didn't it? Sneaky little bastard. I'm exploring it in way too much more detail than I was planning on it, but we are so close to filling it all in, so might as well finish it. Because I already said that next episode we're gonna do the next two side quest. So if you're here, you want to explore with us. And especially to see what it's in that damn red chest.
Right. Give me that. A treasure chest. Yes, I know. Seven thousand. Just there as well. So many chests. But that's the one we want. That's the one we want to know. Ooh, barely. Strength formula. Oh, having said that, I think I didn't even give the lost formula back to the dog. Uh, let's see, other... Ooh, I've got another recipe as well. Victory Day Platter. Uh, recluse formula for the Hermit's recipe, remedy, and the Strength Elixir. Ooh, I definitely want to get that one. Means I can make my own strength elixirs. May <laughs> make people even more stronger. Alright, you saw a chest down there, I can see it. Alright, how far are long are we? One more chest, 100% explored. I like it. And there's no saying that it's in this area. It's high likely, but not guaranteed. So we're gonna have one more swoop down the mountain. And like I said, I will find that last one if it isn't there. And there it is. <laughs> Accidentally watching down there and we found it. More Hermes Remedies. Which of course is the highest uh, XP gain. Because the, the only one that's higher is the actual level up. Just like I said, I might give the two of the characters in between this and the next episode. Seeing as how close we are. Well, how I feel how close we are to the ending. Because I think after the ultimate Grimwald Nox, the only objective we have is the Magnum Opus of Zola. I think if we have that, then we also we defeated the Grimble Nox and the Big Bad Alchemist. Yeah, I, I can't see anything more than that unless the game still introduces another ultimate element to it, but we don't know that yet. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna leave it here. I really enjoyed exploring this bit, really nice tower. Next time we have two side quests. We have the one from Jules' mother, and a little bit about the Monstrum's history. So, that's gonna be next time. Hope to see you there then. Until then, I wish you a great night, morning, day, wherever you are. And I hope to see you there. Bye-bye.